one's mind, but it's called graduation. That's why you can know, start really taking out, like, hey, this is how much gold you have to start paying, this bet. Growing up on the south side of Chicago, he dreamed of going to Morehouse, the historically black college in Atlanta that counts Martin Luther King Jr. among its distinguished alumni. Once I got accepted and saw that, hey, the money is being offered, but didn't have an idea of, you know, what I was really getting myself into. And then, at commencement, I'm going to put those people in your bus. Freddie Williams got the surprise of a lifetime. My family is making a grant to eliminate their student loans. When billionaire businessman Robert F. Smith pledged to pay the student loans for the entire class, claiming some $34 million in student and parent debt. It was crazy, you know, <laughs> you know to look back and see my parents in the stands crying and celebrating, like that's when I knew, like, okay, this is big. How big was your debt? In total, it was around 125K. Wow. That is a huge weight to be lifted. Tremendous. <laughs> Total student loan debt in the U.S. is now nearly $1.8 trillion, and experts say many young people are delaying buying homes and starting families because of it. But the Morehouse class of 2019 is something of an experiment. What could lives look like when students graduate debt-free? I think only now, as we get five years out, people realize the implication of what having no loans is. Like, if you can buy a house right after graduation, which people would interview if they, they did, we do need a parent to put no loans in. Filmmakers Joshua Reed and Imani Rashad Soche are also part of the class of 2019. Say one. They're making a documentary about how their classmates are faring thanks to that generous gift. Someone started a nonprofit to get black and brown students into tech. Someone became a family man, they, they have a daughter now. Hey, this is what happened at Morehouse. They got the debt cleared and they were able to have this exponential effect. What happens when we clear the debt for millions of Americans? Last year, the Supreme Court struck down President Biden's ambitious $430 billion student debt relief plan. The Supreme Court blocked me for relating student debt, but they didn't stop me. Since then, the administration has expanded existing programs to cancel $167 billion in debt, with most relief going to people working in the public sector and for nonprofits. They're sort of doing these piecemeal fixes, but they're not doing anything to stop the underlying problem. Josh Mitchell is the author of The Debt Trap. He says Congress created the Federal Student Loan Program to expand college access, but by allowing students and their parents to borrow virtually any amount, to study virtually anything, the government has enabled colleges to raise tuition without consequence. There's a cycle of students take out loans, schools raise their tuition, students take out more loans. That's essentially what's happened over the past 40 years. That's why tuition, up until recent years, has grown at sometimes triple the rate of inflation. More than half of all college students now graduate with student loan debt, with the average owing nearly $30,000. Now with all of this debt, how much is it impacting the economy negatively? The U.S. economy is the world's biggest, most dynamic, in large part because of higher education. But you also have a lot of students who are not in default on their loans, but are devoting more and more of their paychecks to paying off debt. That's money that they could have been using to save for retirement or buy a house or to even start a business. For the average student, there is a payoff for going to college, but I think that the problem is they're overpaying. The cost of tuition has increased to a degree far greater than inflation. Why did that happen? Colleges and universities obviously have to be good stewards and they have to constantly look at our business model. But I will say this, we're in the business of human capital and human capital is expensive. So when you think about investing in teaching, research, scholarship, those things are investments we have to make. Nicole Hurd is the president of Lafayette College, a private four-year school in Easton, Pennsylvania. We're really known for liberal arts and engineering. She worries that fear of student debt is discouraging the lower and middle-income students who benefit most from attending college. We're so fixed on the price 
and we're thinking about the sticker shock of the price, we're not thinking about the long-term investment mm -hmm. as individuals, as families, and as a country. If somebody goes to college, their children will go to college, their grandchildren will go to college. It changes everything. Tuition and room and board at Lafayette is more than $87,000 a year. Though in recent years, the school has made efforts to offer more grants and fewer loans as part of its financial aid packages. So we met their demonstrated need with a $39,531 of grant assistance. Some debt is okay. A little skin in the game is not the end of the world. What we can't have is people have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of student debt. That's not okay. But the nonprofit sector in higher education is getting much better about being transparent about what debt is and then making sure students and families get good choices. Still, more than 40 million Americans have student loan debt, with three and a half million owing more than $100,000. The average interest on that debt is nearly 7%. The average length of repayment, more than 20 years. It's why filmmaker Joshua Reed believes the story of Morehouse class of 2019 needs to be told. People are being crushed by the immense weight of this debt, but once it's relieved, they can go on to do all sorts of things. How often do you think about what you don't have to pay instead of loans? Oh, almost every day. Freddie Williams Jr. was back on campus last month for the five-year reunion of that lucky class. The 26-year-old software engineer says instead of paying back a mountain of debt, he gets to pay the gift forward. It was, you know, bigger than just having my debt paid off. Because of that gift, you know, I was able to buy a house and would be buying a house that allowed for my brother to move in while he's finishing his degree. And I know it, you know, in my soul that I have to continue to give back to pass it forward. This portion of Sunday morning is brought to you by Vivian.